Hey everyone, it's Dr. Ron here. It's a beautiful day, however, it is freezing. I just want to talk to you guys about a recent study that was done. I flipped the camera around. And uh, hopefully, you guys can hear me. I have my little mic right here. If you can't hear me, let me know. Um, I just want to talk to you guys about uh, why is it that a recent Harvard published article said that those people who go gluten-free has a worsening chance of developing type 2 diabetes. This is, this is a strange concept, right? And this is a little mind-blowing because, you know, I'm gluten-free. And, uh, and uh, but does this worsen my type 2 diabetes? And, and here, here here's, some, here's some facts about gluten-free. Well, most people who go gluten-free, they tend to do it wrong because they may eliminate wheat or barley or rye out of their diet, but what they're replacing it with are gluten-free prepackaged products, which may have uh, uh, coconut flour and uh, glutinous rice flour, and these things also spike the blood sugar. In fact, sometimes they have a worse glycemic index than actual gluten, and these things can cause inflammation as well. So it's not just about gluten. It's uh, it's about the content and what you replace it with. That's number one. Number two. The other reason is that in the standard American diet, in the standard American diet, we have a overabundance of wheat, and unfortunately, most of the prebiotics that we take are in the form of gluten. Prebiotics are things that feed the bacteria in our gut. Whether it's good or bad bacteria, it's called a prebiotic. And so when people eliminate the gluten, they're taking away most of their prebiotics that feeds the good bacteria. So when they go gluten-free, the good bacteria goes away and the bad bacteria goes away too, but the bad bacteria can proliferate if they eat uh, processed gluten-free substances like what I call gluten junk food, right? Gluten-free junk food. And so that causes a higher level inflammation. And this is not the first time we're talking about this. Uh, a couple years ago, there's another article talking about how, uh, I think this was in circulation by the American Heart Association, how those who go gluten-free, uh, the month afterwards, um, there is a transient rise and in increased risk of inflammation causing uh, heart attacks. And so why does that happen? It's because of the same reason. People are removing gluten from the diet, removing the, the, the prebiotics that they're, they're supposed to have to feed the good bacteria, right? And so how are we supposed to do this? How are we supposed to go gluten-free and be well, right? So gluten can be very toxic to the gut in most people. And whether people are celiac disease or whether people are gluten intolerant or gluten sensitive, gluten can be very toxic to the gut. So why is removing something toxic so bad is because we're also removing something good like the good bacteria without giving it prebiotics. So what is a prebiotic, right? So when you go gluten-free, this is my tip, when you go gluten-free, you have to feed the good bacteria in your gut in the form of cruciferous vegetables like green leafy vegetables, um, in the form of fiber, have plenty of fiber. And these things will feed the good bacteria in the gut so when you go gluten-free, the good bacteria has stuff for it to feed on, for it to proliferate. So, yes, going gluten-free is wonderful for a lot of people, right? It, it makes me, it got rid of my asthma for me, it got rid of my eczema for me, it got rid of my fatigue, it got rid of uh, my anxiety, it got rid of my palpitations. However, I did it the right way, and the right way is with prebiotics. So a lot of probiotics uh, out there that are marketed, I, I think you should be taking them too while, you, while you're uh, gluten-free. So get rid of gluten, take some probiotics, eat prebiotics. If you don't like taking pills, then eat fermented foods, fermented unpasteurized foods like kimchi, for example, right? Or I had pickled rutabaga this weekend. That was actually really good. And so these things, uh, you know, they, they carry the good bacteria into the gut and, uh, and uh, stuff like rutabaga itself is already prebiotic. So it's like a probiotic and a prebiotic in one. Uh, but eat plenty of vegetables. Vegetables with fermented foods supply the good bacteria that you need and, and also give the bacteria something to feed on. Now, there are some more expensive probiotics 
that uh, have prebiotics built into them. So they're probiotics packaged with fiber and packaged with plants that, and, and even oils that the good bacteria feed on. And these are actually really good high quality probiotics. And another thing that I even recommend is taking something like uh, L-glutamine, which actually heals the lining of the gut in a lot of people. So, so going gluten-free is not just a thing. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it, there is a medical condition. It's non, non-celiac gluten uh, intolerance or celiac disease is the other one, which is much worse. But do it right. Don't eat gluten junk food. So, and. Um, also take prebiotics when you take probiotics when you go gluten-free so the good bacteria has time to proliferate to protect your gut lining all right share this with someone that you know is gluten-free all right uh, so I'm gonna answer some questions a lot of people uh, it's gorgeous out here it is gorgeous out here but it is freezing it's like in the 50s it's really cold uh, dr. Oob always good to have you on the feed Gluten-free foods are mostly garbage. Well, they are. Gluten-free prepackaged foods are mostly garbage, right? Uh, wholesome vegetables, they're okay. Uh, Michael Smith from Indianapolis, how's it going? Uh, Kathy, yeah, well, so, yeah, gluten-free itself is not a good thing. You have to do gluten-free, non-processed foods, unprocessed food, and get rid of processed sugars, get rid of sugar substitutes, because all these things can damage the lining of the gut. And we want to put a good bacteria in the lining of the gut. So we either take probiotics or take fermented foods with prebiotics like cruciferous vegetables and high amounts of fiber. Um, hey Tommy, how's it going? The weather here is, is pretty cold, but it's actually pretty nice. Uh, hey Wang, how's it going? Christina, day five on a grain-free diet. Uh, why are you so freaking tired and have a headache? Oh, great, great question. So. For those people who go gluten-free, there's sometimes there is almost like a withdrawal stage, right? And the withdrawal stage is not truly a withdrawal, like withdrawing from a drug. A lot of people who go gluten-free and grain-free um, tend to eat, number one, less calories uh, because they're eating higher fibrous foods like asparagus and cauliflower and rutabagas and all those great vegetables and kale and spinach. Um, and so, and so it makes you full faster. However, when, you, when a lot of people go gluten-free, a lot of people also drop their insulin level. And insulin goes to the kidneys to tell the kidneys to reabsorb sodium into the body. So when a lot of people go gluten-free, they decrease their insulin level, which is a good thing, but they become sodium depleted or sodium dehydrated. And so I'll tell people to increase your intake of sodium if your blood pressure is normal and also increase hydration. That's a great question. Christina. Rhonda, where am I? I am at the Functional Medicine Conference in Huntington Beach, California. We just finished the conference, so I'm trying to enjoy the sunset over here and talking to you guys. And so, and so, Deborah, I am diabetic. How can I do this? How, how can you do what? How can you go gluten-free? Well, I guess you just do. <laughs> um, but uh, those people who are diabetic, as, as I said earlier, uh, it's actually good to go actually grain-free rather than just gluten-free because diabetes is an inflammatory disease. It's not just about sugar. It's about inflammation. And we know that gluten and something called FODMAPs, which is a, a, a molecule that's attached to the end of a gluten protein, um, can also cause a lot of harm in people's guts, which causes more inflammation, which causes impaired uh, sugar uh, absorption and adaptation and in decreased uh, metabolism in people. So, Deborah, you, you're, 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 you should be okay to go grain-free or gluten-free, but consult with your physician. Always important, right? Hey, Nicole, how's it going? Nicole, I haven't seen you in a long time, but then again, I haven't done live video in a while. Um, there is a span, a long, long span of time where I didn't because I uh, wanted to do some more research on the dietary side, but I'm gonna share with you really cool things in the upcoming future maybe even later tonight or maybe tomorrow about some of the stuff that we talk about here at the Institute of Functional Medicine Conference and uh, about some new things that I've learned and some new research that's underway uh, in 2017 on fasting and intermittent fasting that's that's also being presented by a very smart Italian man in in Southern California and so uh, Christina you're welcome you're gonna drink a V8 in a bottle of water before going to bed. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
before you drink that V8, <laughs> uh, what is in that V8? All right, there's different versions of V8s. Uh, the V8 fruit juices actually spike your insulin level. It's not the greatest thing in the world. Um, there's another organic version of a V8, which I really don't know if it's organic. Um, but yeah, be careful about that. Alan, how's it going, bud? Love Hyatt Huntington Beach. Yeah, this is the first time I'm here, so it's a humongous, like, resort style hotel, so I'm not really used to this. But yeah, uh, my skin looks great. <laughs> I think it's uh, so I'm a photography nerd and a videography nerd, so during the sunset is when we have the softest palette on our skin in any video or any photos. So it's not makeup and it's not the, the rays of the sun. It's because it's during sunset and this is a great wavelength of light that hits the skin. So that's why we do a lot of photo shoots around the sunset. Uh, Fatima, you started gluten, dairy, soy, corn, when, when not losing, I guess, I guess it's supposed to be weight and your diagnosis is hypothyroidism. Well, great question. So Fatima, it sounds like you're on an elimination diet. And what elimination diet is, is eliminating things that could be toxic to you. And gluten, dairy, soy, corn, uh, those things, and peanuts, and uh, sometimes legumes for some people uh, could be toxic to the body. Um, but, you know, if you have hypothyroidism, you got to make sure that that's controlled. So talk to your doctor about that. So, uh, Josefa, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. I appreciate that. So if you guys have any other questions, let me know. And I hope everybody can hear me. This is the first time I'm using my uh, wireless uh, running mic. So, uh, but it is beautiful beach right here. I'm gonna go for a run because it's freezing. Um, I did yoga this morning. I did a run before that. So I feel pretty good throughout today. Uh, I'm gonna do some interval training and some sprints to get my heart rate up because I've been sitting down in the conference for the last 12 hours <laughs> listening to lectures and and really getting good ideas from a lot of doctors who are truly compassionate about their patients at the Institute of Functional Medicine conference so I will talk to you guys later